Doctors of Reddit, what was the craziest case of patient paranoia that you have ever seen? My father was a doctor, dermatologist, had a patient who accused him of prescribing a non-existent experimental drug for a supposed condition that he was never diagnosed with, tried to take him to court and lost, sent a threatening letter after, reported to police. After the police confronted him about it he dropped a homemade fruit basket with a single bullet on top of the fruit at the front step of the office addressed, but not postmarked, to my father with a creepy and signed apology note. Basket was immediately shown to police. About a month later my father received a letter from the guy stating he had seen my name in the paper sports section, local golf tournament results, and that he knew I would be playing at an upcoming tournament where the start times were published. There was a police presence at the tournament, something that never happened, because my father reported it. My dad's nurse's husband was a local detective and pretty much followed me the whole day with my dad. The police found the guy in the parking lot unarmed and he was arrested, then eventually committed to a psych hospital for some time. There's still a restraining order against him to this day but this was over 15 years ago and the guy seems to have disappeared. I didn't know any of this until about 5 years ago, but I remember my dad having a single bullet in his bedside table even though he never owned any guns. When I asked him about it all he would say was someone gave it to me. Former psych nurse here. I once had a patient who believed he was Satan. Since Satan was nude so was he. He spent much of his time in a private, secure room and when it was time to go for some fresh air around the unit we had to bargain with him to wear a robe. Not a doctor, but my grandfather had Louis body dementia. Unlike other dementia, Louis body has a strong hallucination component. Here are a few of my favorites. My grandma was having an affair with the pharmacist. She was also running a W house which would be okay, but she wouldn't give him a cut. The shadow men had built an exact replica of his house, but on wheels, to use as a brothel, naturally, and were stealing his electricity to power it. That's why his switches, which powered outlets, would flip and nothing would happen. They had also dug in a basement under his house which he attempted to access one night by cutting a hole in the floor with an axe. If he took anyone looking for this alternate house, they would move it to make him look crazy. The staff at the care home he eventually was placed in was treating all the food with embalming fluid, so he couldn't eat it. He also had another doctor tell him that the medications he was on were us poisoning him and that he didn't need to take them anymore. It was a roller coaster. Not a doctor, but I work with elderly people prone to delirium. We once had an 80 year old academic at our institute. I think he was some sort of professor and obviously well spoken. Also mostly appeared to be very lucid at first glance. For months, he'd harbored the idea that he was at the center of an elaborate ritual conducted by a medieval sort of witch. Because of her spells, he would constantly phase in and out of consciousness, imagining to smoke a pipe and talk to people that weren't there at all etc. He further claimed that he had found that there were pentagrams drawn in lemon juice and goat urine all over his apartment. His mouth was constantly deathly dry, because she would fill it with the ashes of cursed scrolls and parchment. The witch planned to extract something from his body to create a flying ointment or something, for her broomstick. Anyways, it was absolutely wild and nonsensical. The crazy thing was, his delusions turned out to be warranted. It was later found that his granddaughter for months had actually tried to poison him with incrementally increasing doses of belladonna extract. Well in the medieval times people believed that witches could fly only if they put a flying ointment, usually made from human flesh bones, on their broomstick, and the stuff about goat urine, pentagrams and ashes are also historically accurate. So, his delirium made sense, from a mythological point of view. Psych nurse. Had a patient that thought that the queen was a lizard person who swapped his penis with another one. Also had a patient who thought we were dragging the air through the vents. Oh and someone who thought his cat was spying stalking him for Trump. To be fair, his cat was probably spying on him. <laughs> Student nurse here, but I still go to the hospital for internships. Had a patient come to the air with really high blood sugar, type 2 diabetic. I asked her if she was taking her medications and she said that she didn't want to, thinking she was referring to some type of bad side effect. I asked her what medication she was taking and it was diabetes, chlorpropamide for those of you who aren't Brazilian, pretty standard DM2 medication, not a lot of bad side effects other than some skin rashes, 
I asked her why she wasn't taking the pills and she said look at the name. I can't take something that has Diabo, devil in Portuguese, in the title. If I have to go, I shall go without any contact with these devilish chemicals. Like the lord intended. It was hard not to laugh at that one but I kept my crap together. Not a doctor, but I scribed for one. A patient of ours was having hallucinations where a helicopter was chasing him. He'd randomly hear helicopter sounds throughout the day and felt like he was being spied on. Turns out he was ingesting too many edibles and smoking too much weed. Once he cut down, the paranoia stopped. Well, that was easy. Not a doctor but I used to go to a nursing home to visit with people. I had an elderly lady call me her grandchild. That wasn't uncommon even for those who were completely lucid. I had many grandmas and grandpas and she was my favorite. She was very sweet and funny. She seemed to only have the occasional lapse of memory. At least that's what I thought. One day I was in her room watering her flowers she asked me how I really was. I said fine but she then whispered I don't think they can hear us. Unless there's some device in the flowers brought. I was confused but said nope I'm fine. She loudly said my real name and that she was happy to see me. Then she grabbed my arm and pulled me in and called me Anna. Not my name. And said she could get me safe. Then went on this whole thing about them capturing me and bleaching my skin. Now she was black. I'm white. She asked if my skin was burning and not to worry because I wasn't patchy. So I could pass for a white woman and that I could still get a husband. She was worried about my children, which I didn't have any. She gave me crackers because she was worried that I didn't have food. I don't know if she had been stockpiling them for a reason but they were the kind they occasionally got with dinner. I honestly didn't know how to respond. I was 15 and very confused. I think I smiled and tried to tell her I was safe. It was a very weird and sad at the same time. I'm not sure what she went though in life so it could have been some kind of memory. Anyway after that day she would occasionally call me Anna, give me crackers, and ask if I was safe. Most of the time she would call me by my real name, until about 6 months before she passed and then she really didn't recognize me at all. Paramedic. Had a guy refuse an EKG for his 10 stroke 10 left sided crushing chest pain because they caused heart attacks. When I asked him why he thought that he said all of his friends who died of heart attacks had won. And that he was wise to our EKG conspiracy to give people heart disease and raise money for Big Pharma. That's a pretty brilliant variation on the hospital's kill people delusion. When I was going through EMT school there was an old woman whose legs were basically rotting off and she was dying in the air. She was convinced she was in Germany and that we were literal Nazis torturing her. I had to hold her down while a doctor stuck her or something. It was pretty crappy feeling and not even the worst thing I saw that night. Had a similar experience with an elderly lady in Iku. It is so disturbing because she was so convinced we were torturing her. I'm an scribe. The most paranoid patients I've seen are the ones who are very, very high on M. Usually it involves them believing that bugs are crawling on or out of their skin. Don't do M. Or H. Those drugs are bad MK. Not really paranoia, but delusion or dementia. My mum used to work in the office on a psychiatric ward. One of the patients would come to the office window every single day, ask for a bus ticket and pay for it with a penny toffee. They would pass him a raffle ticket and he would spend the rest of the day sat on a bench in the reception area waiting for a bus. Every night after he went to sleep the staff would put the penny toffee back on his bedside table. I always thought it was really sweet of them to keep up the charade. Paramedic here. Not the craziest but the one that always gives me a chuckle. I was transporting a paranoid schizophrenic patient who kept shouting at me that I was an agent of the government who was out to get him. I couldn't really disagree with him as I was a government employee and I was there to get him. I'm a paranoid schizophrenic myself, and I'll totally remember that if I ever become psychotic again. In all honesty though, it's terrifying when you can't tell delusions from reality, and it makes it even harder when there's coincidences like this. That confirms what you're believing. Not a doctor, but this is what happened to me. Had been experiencing psychosis for years in hindsight, but it came to a head about 18 months ago. I eventually went to my doctor who referred me to a psychiatric nurse, who prescribed me antipsychotics. For a while I was convinced there was nothing wrong with me. Even the thing that followed me around told me I was making it up. 
I realize now how ridiculous that is but I was convinced at the time. And that my pills were placebo pills so that if when I went back to the nurse and said they were working, they'd tell me they were fake pills and I must be making it up. I stopped taking them for a while. That's the thing with mental illness, the pills work so you feel better. So you stop taking them. Then you go a bit mental again and started to get symptoms again so I'm very happily back on them. I am glad that you are back on them and I hope you are doing well. I know someone who is has schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and sometimes goes off their meds. It's heartbreaking. Not a doctor, but had a geriatric patient with Lewy body dementia. She was married with kids but was in constant fear that the FBI prison truck was there to pick her up and take her to the lesbian prison camp. Lesbian prison camp is a great band name. Not a medical professional. However I work in an er. Uh, one patient stated that she need to stop the destruction of the world as aliens were coming to take everyone she loved. She stated that at midnight if she didn't get to a certain park, we're all freaked. Nurses sedated her as she began to hurt herself, slamming head into the wall. My wife is a clinician and had a person come in with the idea that Donald Trump's Twitter feed it was actually an alien artificial intelligence that infects everyone who reads it. I really like that one. A blig not a doctor, but, one of my close family members is, a lady came in with her infant, 0-12 months, indicating that the government was going to take her baby away if said infant didn't get the heart surgery the baby needed, because they would think she was neglecting it, she had visible signs of self-inflicted injury and, I forget the name of it, but the one where people rip out clumps of their own hair and eat it. My family member treated the baby. When I say treated, I mean, they did the rundown on the baby and verified that it was in good health. Social workers were called with respect to whether there were any orders out or issues regarding the welfare of the kid. And, nothing. The kid wasn't on anyone's radar for social services, or any of that. Then things get interesting. Police show up. Husband had called the police and said wife was acting erratically on the phone, but when he got home, she and baby were not there. I gather police protocol normally involves checking hospital admission so people get found quickly. Wife subsequently failed, both with officers and physicians present, to correctly identify day of the week and current location. I'm gonna omit the whole after story, but the end of the story is just that a couple months later, husband, baby, and wife mother are all happy healthy, and it's about as positive of an ending as an acute mental health incident can have, given the circumstances. I would put this in the paranoia category just because this woman was so afraid to go to heck due to her religious beliefs that she let herself die. Lady went into labor and post labor started him ahaging. She needed a blood transfusion but was a Jehovah's Witness and refused treatment. She died as a result. I was raised a JW, and yeah, the crap whack. Something about how blood is sacred. Many people have either died or almost died due to their refusal to accept blood. It's mostly concerning for children who might need a transfusion, and the JW parents not allowing them. That was always my fear growing up, at least. Not a doctor but I was convinced that my ex is communicating with me through a static electricity. I straight up confronted him about it. Not a doctor but I worked for a luxury watch company doing repairs. One client was 100% certain that we installed a tracking device in her watch. I came back repeatedly to have it removed and got the police involved. It was actually really sad to see how delusional this woman was. We don't want to track you and let me tell you there is no room for anything other than the movement in a watch case. <laughs> Veterinarian here. One owner brought in his seemingly healthy cat in for diarrhea. He brought medical records from the cat's prior annual wellness exam at a different clinic. I reviewed them. Pretty standard stuff. Then the dude started going on a rant about how the other veterinarian used experimental drugs on the cat. When asked about it, it became clear the guy was unwell. He later dropped the cat off for boarding and abandoned her at our clinic. Sounds like that was the best thing for that poor cat. I could nurse. We had an elderly woman with some kind of schizophrenia. My mental health knowledge is shocking. And she had. Subdural hematoma. Facial fractures. Fractured clavicle. Dislocated shoulder. All of her fingers were broken. Huge burns to her hands. Stable L5-6 fracture. Some kind of fracture dislocation to her ankle. Burns and open wounds that required suturing all over. 
It appeared from the injuries that she was significantly assaulted but no she did it all to herself. I'm a physiotherapist UK. I was on my first placement as a student. A patient who had a hip replacement was delirious post OP. They were convinced they'd not had an operation and the night after having it they tried to get in bed with another patient. After stripping off all their clothes, they threatened to get their partner involved who was an ex-lawyer because we said an x-ray was needed to check the prosthetic as they weren't following precautions but the patient didn't think they had anything wrong with them. When they came round fully and was discharged they said I'm really sorry, but I think I went a bit crazy these last few days. Nice of the patient to apologize afterwards. Patient's mother didn't want son to get vaccinated because she thought vaccinations created superbugs that couldn't be treated. Sounds like she's mixed up two issues, people not completing courses of antibiotics, and vaccines. Not a doctor but work on a psych ward. We have a patient who thinks he can hear his girlfriend's voice through the wall he shares with his neighbors and has convinced himself she's swinging with all his family and neighbors. This was when I went abroad to France for a clerkship in psychiatry. I had learned French in high school hence, had a horrible American accent. Once I arrived to the ward they told me a general description of all the patients. They mentioned there was an American patient whom they had found on the streets who claimed he had escaped to France since the ISV was looking for him. When the patient heard me speaking to other colleagues he thought I was an American secret agent coming for him. This sparked a psychiatric episode and caused great stress. Not a doctor, but I do conduct interviews in the county jail. The assessment I have to use asks about personal information, such as address, job status, income, etc. This particular defendant stated she was a mermaid. She did not know her or her son's age, as merpeople age differently than humans. She had moved to our city to receive services she could not get elsewhere, which is funny because we are a good 3 hours from the coast, and I thought she would need to be near the ocean. She would not specify the services needed. She listed her occupation as a celebrity on TV and working constantly, and only made about $300 monthly. All in all, the drugs she was addicted to really warped her reality. I currently have a patient who believes he is an undercover police officer and has been sent to infiltrate my traumatic brain injury clinic. Brain injury is interesting. The modern day remake of Shutter Island looks really interesting. Clint Eastwood has a RIA training order against my father. My father is convinced Clint is his dad. He has gone out to his home and hair raced him quite a bit. Had a patient who needed an orthopedic operation following a fracture. Refused multiple times because he believed he had discovered a secret in the 70s and major world leaders were out to kill him to keep him quiet. He thought of he had an anesthetic that Trump or Theresa May specifically would use it as a way to kill him and cover it up. After over a week of regular psych input he had the op and it was a success. This middle aged lady had a pituitary brain mass that had gotten large enough to push on her optic chiasm. The place where your optic nerves cross over each other between your brain and your eyes. She was totally blind because of this before she decided to seek care. She had her brain mass resected and was on a bunch of steroids to replace her pituitary function. The steroids, plus the IQ environment lack of good sleep, plus the recent brain poking led her to become absolutely psychotically delirious. She was extremely paranoid, to the point of mistrusting everyone who came into her room. This included her family, who, since she couldn't see them, she accused of being imposters who were working for the hospital to try and trick her. One day my whole team was at a conference and got a frantic page from her nurse. We rushed back to the IQ to find the patient, fully naked, perched on the side of her bed. Remember Owling, about to do some sort of WWE type jump attack in the nurse's general direction. We managed to subdue her with some Haldol, and after a few more days she started to clear up. But I'll never forget that image of that big nude Pacific Islander lady teetering on the edge of the bed. Not a doctor but, my ex thought she was being spied upon and blowguns were being used to shoot small needles into her neck. Made an interesting week, we had already broke up years before but I was the one person apart from her mother that she trusted and her mother had to leave for family emergency. She kicked me out about 4 times a day and then called back as she was sure now I was not one of them. I brought my laptop so I can watch at least some movies as she didn't have any entertainment system, computer or internet. 
I couldn't because they will be monitoring through it so I had to remove the battery and I was still worried she would smash it to pieces. The mind of someone with good bout of paranoid schizophrenia is, well, it is entertaining in a very scary sort of way. She kicked my out one last time, did not let me in again, threatened to call the cops and then I found she had stole the last of my money. I really did not have a choice but to call my brother to borrow some so I could at least travel back home. Good guy or girl, idk if I would do all of that for my ex. While in the nursing home, my great grandmother was convinced that the nurses were sneaking into the room at night and stealing her organs. She crocheted a lot, and she would crochet crosses and then put googly eyes on them and hang them around her room so that God could watch the nurses and stop them from stealing her organs while she slept. Dementia can be wild. A room full of googly eyed crosses would legit be frightening. Not a doctor, but I had one call me because my ex-wife was displaying behavior that indicated she may do harm to herself and others. She went to her, let me count here, third ex-husband's apartment, broken and screamed at him about how he was cheating on her. They were already divorced at the time so yeah, after sacking his apartment, and not finding anything, she zeroed in on his rosary and accused him of cheating on her with the Virgin Mary. Not a doctor. But my parents threatened to take me to a psychiatrist multiple times after I tried telling them that my older sister swallowed our pet hamster. I swear I'm not making this stuff up, but now I think I sound like a crazy person to my family. My gran had patient paranoia a few months before she died. I was around 13 so I wasn't told but recently, as I'm studying psychosis at school so my parents told me, apparently. She believed that the doctor tortured guinea pigs in front of her as she was getting medication. It was really sad because I remember her being so nice and gentle and definitely not someone that could have been suffering. But we don't know what caused this paranoia as she was good friends with the nurse. Physician assistant here. Not as crazy as some other stories. But, when I was in school doing my psych rotation, a guy came in looking for help regarding anxiety and paranoia. He was homeless and had a very extensive history of drug use, mostly hallucinogens and psychedelics, and he was living in a shelter, where he said he didn't feel welcome. He told me he felt like people were out to get him. When I asked who these people were, he rolled his eyes and gave me a don't play me look, and said well, you, for starters. I started telling him how I was only there to help him find the treatment he'd been looking for, and he kept giving me these looks while I spoke. Eventually. He goes come on dude, you keep drinking from your water bottle. People do that when they're nervous, and you're making me nervous too now. So I put my water away and laughed it off to try and make him more comfortable. And we kept talking. He keeps making remarks and I keep reassuring him, until he goes isn't this all a little weird? This is weird right? You're freaking me out. He's maintaining his composure this whole time, almost smiling, and then finally he just starts laughing outright. I had been able to keep calm and maintain a professional attitude until this point, but as soon as he broke and laughed, I burst out laughing too. So here we are, sitting in this crappy office, laughing our asses off him because he was very nervous and me because of, well, the whole situation I guess. That was a couple years ago. Nice guy. Hope he's doing better. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.